Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Arb Studios Comics, and this is my show where I review the comics I've read, tell you about the Kickstarters I've backed, where you can back them also, and uh, all that fun stuff. Um, oh, geez. So, I'm here to talk about Amazing Spider-Man Volume 6. I got it from my local comic shop, uh, Gamers Asylum, in Ogden, Utah. And uh, this is a this one here is written by Nick Spencer, has art by Francesco Mana and Ryan Otley, one of my favorites. You may know him from Invincible and uh, Grizzly Shark. And it's inked by Cliff Rathburn and colors by Carlos Lopez and Nathan Fairbairn. And it has letters by VCs Joe Cara Magna. So, what do we got here? Um, this hat, as you can tell from the cover, this features uh, Carnage. I'm not really a huge uh, Carnage fan. So, uh, all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, okay. Not really a huge Carnage fan, but I did enjoy reading this. Uh, there's this character in the backgrounds that keeps popping up causing problems for Spider-Man um, and stuff like that. Let's see here. So, uh, I have a friend that uh, is, he is a, a big Venom and Carnage fan and uh, this kind of book, if you're listening to this Jason Brosma, uh, check this book out. You might be interested in it. Um, it's got some cool stuff. Cool art by uh, Ryan Otley and Francesco Mana. So, do check that out. Uh, this has the uh, Green Goblin with the Carnage symbiote on him, so uh, that might be interesting for you. Check that stuff out. So Norman Osborn has the Carnage symbiote on him, and he is wreaking havoc in a hospital uh, asylum thing going on. So, um, yeah. I don't really know what else to say about this one. Um, it's just furthering on the story. We're getting a little bit more of uh, Mary Jane and Peter Parker's uh, relationship forming and uh, again restarting, reforming. So that's what's going on with that one. Uh, you could get that at your local comic shops or you can order it online somewhere. Let's see. Where's my note at? Gosh dang it. You'd think I was an amateur or something. Okay, next up on my list, on my reviews here, is uh, books called Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer, numbers 3 and 4. I've already reviewed uh, 1 and 2 or in a previous episode. You could go back and check those out. Um, so these are independently made. Uh, I think, let me see here. It's my name on the Kickstarter page. Oh, I don't know if there is a Kickstarter page on this. Nope, no thank you page in this one. I do not think I backed this though. I think I had to, I contacted um, David Crownson. Is that the right name? Yes, David Crownson. I contacted David Crownson directly to uh, get these, PayPal'd him and uh, received these. I think now he is picked up by a publisher, so you might want to look at, into that. Uh, find David Crownson on uh, Twitter and uh, see if you can get your own from him. He'll, I'm sure he'll give you links to it. So this is done by David Crownson and uh, art by Sylvian Repos and Cortland Ellis. And this starts out with a flashback explaining why this character, um, let's see, Caesar, why this character Caesar had to take his family and run from the plantation. So he has a daughter and a wife and he he grabs this daughter and wife and he he escapes from the plantation. After the uh, flashback it goes into a different artist and it's more, uh, I like, it starts out black and white kind of uh, a Walking Dead style thing going on, and um, then it goes into a really flamboyant kind of uh, kind of uh, Miles Morales uh, 
Spider-Gwen kind of style, and uh, I like it. It's really cool. It's got the toner dots in it, and a lot of vibrant covers, colors. And yes, I am really enjoying the story of uh, Harriet Tubman, Demon Slayer. It's got some great stuff going on. Um, so they're on the run in this whole third issue. Uh, this whole third issue is a chase scene kind of going on. Um, the three, the family of three, and uh, Harriet Tubman, and her, she has a son that is white um, and very good with the bow and arrows. Uh, so they they are running through the forest on a, a uh, wagon, a horse-drawn wagon, and they they're vampires on their tails. But they end up uh, defeating them, and uh, actually Harriet's son lights fire to the uh, entire forest to help them escape. So that's that's a heck of a way to escape. But, you know, that's the way things go. Um, and then it ends on a uh, demon walking out from that fire and uh, unscathed, obviously, because demons are fireproof. And so that leaves us with that. Oh, and there's an ad for... Uh, Harriet Tubman merchandise on Redbubble, so as a person who uh, sells my own merchandise on Redbubble, I recommend you, if you're a fan of these comics, check that out. So issue four, issue three was an in, entirely a uh, chase scene in the forest. Issue four starts off with uh, one of the vampires comes out of that burning forest and attacks a uh, slave on the plantation and I will leave it at that because it's kind of interesting what happens to that vampire and slave but then we cut to uh, a church and this d this uh, guy in a white suit shows up and he uh, starts talking to the people about how uh, we gotta get even with this Harriet Tubman she's still in our slaves and he says he's still in our properties which that you know what that means and uh, so he has a wife that comes in she's looks like a voodoo priestess and they make a spell and they send out a call to uh, to all different kind of demons vampires werewolves and all that to uh, start coming after Harriet Tubman and so that's where we're at with the uh, issues four um, I am probably going to uh, if I see it on Kickstarter back issue five and uh, keep on finding out what that story is going because it, it's interesting I like the art style I like the writing and uh, so check out Harriet Tubman find uh, David Crownson on Twitter and find out how you can get your copies now we are on to what is in my mailbox 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 so recently I got a, uh, a pin from Starside Comic I think it goes like that so uh, I've already worn it in my mask to plasma donations and uh, work, so that was pretty fun. Um, they say thanks so much for your support, Dylan. Um, yes, so check out Starside. Uh, Starside is a very interesting story about uh, an alien invasion that comes to Earth, but um, I think we're just following a one of the high schoolers as he uh, is trying to. He's he's stranded in space going from planet to planet trying to figure out how to get home and find his sister who was also abducted. So I, that's what I got in the mail. A pin and some uh, prints to put up on my wall here uh, from Starside. And I got some uh, Miskatonic High comics. These are both the same issue, Miskatonic High 8. I back it so that I get two issues because I have a friend that's reading Miskatonic High. So uh, Brooke, you'll have to decide which uh, cover you want and I'll get that to you and it came with some prints check that out that's a really cool uh, Fantastic Four homage right there so that's the end of my mailbox um, if you have a Kickstarter campaign going let me know about it and uh, I will uh, mention it on here or I'll either back it depending on how what I what I see in that um, so yeah let me know about your Kickstarters I'll back it I'll review it when it arrives all that fun stuff let me know about anything you're doing that I should know about making comics or 
uh, making pins, selling uh, artwork, whatever. Now we're on to the Kickstarter section of my show, where I talk about the Kickstarters that I am backing and ones you should know about. So uh, she, I don't know, it's on Indiegogo right now. She, I did a review for a while ago, and it is on Indiegogo now. I don't know if it's still going because I don't know. Indiegogo is so unfamiliar to me that I don't know how to find out when it ends or not. I don't know. Um, and I don't get a whole lot of updates from Indiegogo. Indiegogo is really confusing to me, their layout and everything, um, and their notification system. I sign up for notifications, and instead of getting notifications about comic books, they send me things about watches and swimming pools and solar panels, things that I'm on there to back comics, and I get all these weird things about different kind of cameras and shoes and weird stuff. So Indiegogo is great for stuff like that, but I'm not... I'm not going to go to Indiegogo to look for a pair of shoes. Sorry. That's just not how it is. Um, anyway, blah, blah, blah. She is on Indiegogo, so go check that out. Miskatonic High is uh, doing a crossover with Lovecraft P.I., and uh, I'm a backer of that now. It ends November 4th, 5th, so go check out that. Uh, Lovecraft P.I. looks so interesting that I hurried on, gr jumped onto Etsy, and I bought volumes 1 and 2 of uh, Lovecraft P.I.'s uh, trade paperbacks, so check that out. Um, I'm excited for this to see what happens. Uh, they are in different eras too, so that's going to be interesting. It's not like we haven't seen time travel in uh, Miskatonic High before, but... So, check that out on Kickstarter before November 5th. Wild Cosmos number 3 is one I, I've backed the first two issues, and now it's back for a third issue. It's a really cool space adventure. Uh, the main character is kind of an Indiana Jones character, Tomb Raider. She goes from planet to planet stealing their artifacts, and uh, I don't know why she's doing it. I think she's got a sickness, and she's going to die soon, so maybe she's doing it to raise enough money to uh, find a cure, or maybe she's just raising enough money to live it up before she's gone. We'll see where that goes. Next up is Vampire Emmy and the Garbage Girl. And a long time ago I backed uh, Destiny New York and uh, I one of the extras that you could add on was a Vampire Emmy and the Garbage Girl mini. And I'm like, I'll do it because I like vampire comics. And so I jumped in on that. It was a good short story, but I wanted more. Now I'm getting more. So check out Vampire Emmy and the Garbage Girl. Uh, it sounds really cool. Um, this garbage, this vampire didn't have her garbage out in time and she, the garbage truck's going by and she hears it but it's sunlight so she hurries and throws on a weird robe and extra coats and all this and a Cthulhu mask and runs out there, throws her garbage out there and one of the garbage people is a, is a hot little girl and she's like, hmm, I want to find out more about this girl. That's what the story's about. So. Go back uh, Vampire Emmy and the Garbage Girl before October 16th. The Standstill 4 is on Kickstarter right now. Um, I have issues 1 and 2 already, and it's about a... Oh, that was my hands. I, I don't know why I keep doing that every episode. Anyway, um, Standstill 4 is about a pandemic where it hits uh, Earth and everybody stops moving for some reason and there are select few that are not affected by this pandemic they're immune to standing still so they're they're running amok while everybody's standing still um, and it's bad news for people that are flying or driving when it happens because they just they freeze up and everything keeps going but they don't so uh, this one guy he's a paramedic and he uh, he's keeping his girlfriend alive who stopped moving, um, feeding her intravenously, running her around in an ambulance, and so it's going to be interesting to find out where this story goes from there. That ends on October 7th, back standstill 4 by October 7th. You can get all four issues on there. Same with every one of these comics. You can, even if you're late to the game, you can always get the first issues that came before it. Shotgun Full of Roses is a romantic horror comic. And it ends on October 7th. Uh, the premise is, 
is what if these two bank robbers ended up with, uh, well, first off, I should say that uh, cupids don't use bow and arrows anymore, and uh, so these two bank robbers end up with cupid's shotgun, and whenever they shoot someone with it, they fall in love. Uh, so that sounded like a really cool story. The art style I liked, uh, it was is a little bit rough, kind of uh, reminds me of uh, Rick Leonardi's um, Spider-Man 2099 days, so I like that kind of art style where it's rough and kind of disjointed, so I backed it. And Shotgun Full of Roses ends on October 7th, check that one out. Last but not least is Jason Brubaker's Phobos. I already have a rough draft kind of copy of it that I got from Patreon and uh, I like it. This is this weird kind of Frankenstein story. An intern goes and works there and uh, so it's on IGG right now uh, in Indiegogo. Right. So you could go on Indiegogo back that I it could be over it could still be going but I'm gonna talk about it for at least two more episodes so check out Jason Brubaker's Phobos on Indiegogo. And that wraps up my episode. Um, I did want to start talk, adding in a little section where I talk about shows because uh, I've been getting wrapped up in some shows lately. Uh, one's called The Motherland. I watched it on Hulu. And it is about uh, an alternate world where uh, witches were not burned at the stake in Salem and have continued to uh, work with the government in this alternate world. And they kind of run the army in this alternate world. And so uh, we're at a training school for... Uh, witches and these three get paired up and uh, they have to be a team and it's really cool I like the way they did it um, I burned through it too quick there wasn't enough episodes in the season well there was but man it was good so I just kept watching it and burned through it and uh, yeah I, I recommend checking out uh, Motherland on uh, Hulu another show I've been suddenly wrapped up in is The Boys. Uh, a lot of talk about The Boys right now, but it, basically it's a, uh, it's kind of like um, The Incredibles, but in an R-rated sense, a little bit like um, what The Watchmen. So there's these heroes and they are not good people when the cameras aren't around to film them being nice. They are horrible people. And one of the main characters is Homelander. He's kind of like Superman and Captain America mixed into one, but he is not a good person at all. Like, he hasn't done anything in this whole show that's redeemable. Um, so check out The Boys. In, it's not for kids, so unless you're an adult, don't check it out. Um, and I just recently watched this morning. I, I meant to only watch a few minutes of it for breakfast, Enola Holmes. But I ended up watching the whole thing. So it was a good one. It has uh, It's on Netflix. It has Henry Cavill in it, The Man of Steel. And it had, uh, oh, what's her name? Mila Bobby Brown in it. And uh, you may know her from Stranger Things. She was amazing in this, uh, less stiff than she was in Stranger Things. So it was a, a lot more playful and fun. And uh, yeah, Enola Holmes is the sister of uh, Sherlock Holmes. And so it was a pretty cool story. Um, and that's all I have for you today. Oh, I did want to start talking about other things going on too, like podcasts and stuff. Um, I'm listening to a podcast right now called uh, uh, Comics Tribe. Um, oh, shoot. Well, never mind. I don't have it on me right now on my phone. Oh, wait, I do. Okay, this is what I was listening to when I was picking up Jack. And it is... Yeah, it is Kickstarter crowdfunding, um, and this is by uh, Tyler James. You can find him on Kickstarter by Tyler James or Comics Launch or uh, Comics Tribe. Those are all places where you can find this. Um, and it, it gives you tips about how to run your own Kickstarter or what's, what successful Kickstarter people run do. Um, check that one out. I will tell you about a different podcast every episode, so... That's the last one I was listening to, so that's the one I'm going to tell you about. And uh, the, I told you about shoot, the shows and movies I watched. Um, oh, 
Well, I'm on the subject of podcasts. This t-shirt, The Geek Show, is a podcast I listen to. I make sure I listen to it every weekend. Um, the second it downloads, I add it to the next on my playlist. Um, Geek Show is a local one from Utah here, and uh, they they are the best uh, at telling you news about what's going on in the geek world, and they're a, they're a funny bunch of people. And anytime they... Uh, so far, every time they've said a movie or a show or something is cool to check it out, then uh, they have not been wrong. It is cool. Check it out. And anytime they've said stay away from a show, well, uh, a few times I didn't listen. I watched a show and it was horrible. So I'm, I'm getting to where I'm trusting their taste in uh, shows a lot more often. So check out Geek Show Podcast. Uh, they're awesome. This is a cool shirt. I love wearing it. So, thank you for watching uh, Rent Arb Studios Comics, and let me know if you have anything you want me to review or talk about. Say anything in the comments, or and I'll I'll read I'll uh, thank you on uh, air and talk about it, all that fun stuff. So, thanks for watching Rent Arb Studios. Goodbye.